So in sport mode, you'll have plenty of get up and go if you want it. There you go. Yeah, I mean. Oh, great. Yeah. Are there faster EVs? Yeah, I think a Ludacris is faster. Yeah. But it's only faster if you're racing. That's right. It's not that much faster if you're on the road. And put your foot in it. There we go. Welcome to that episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, the Karma GS-6. Now, whatever you think you know about this car, forget about it, because you don't know. This doesn't bear any relation to the car you think it is. Back in, I guess, 2010, 11, there was a car called the Fisker Karma, and it was designed by Heinrich Pfister, and the, the body style was very similar to this, almost identical, but there's not one panel on this car that would fit one of those. But it's such a beautiful design, and people just went crazy for it, that they've taken the body and put it on a different chassis, different drivetrain. This is what you call a series hybrid, which I like because you get 90 miles, and then after that, the gas engine kicks in, and it powers the electric motors. The gas engine works as a generator, creates electricity to run the electric motors, and it's quite fast. It's 500 and I think 63 horsepower total, something like that around 600 foot-pounds of torque, quite powerful. You know, I put a lot of miles on this car. I drove for about a month. I put about 700 miles on it, and I didn't use any gas because I got about 80 miles free every day. By free, I mean electric, because when it, when it comes in the electric bill, that doesn't count. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but that's what I think. When I drive here in LA and I see $7 a gallon, it, it sends shivers down my spine. So I was using this every single day, it's got about 35,000 miles on it. Very tight, very strong car, but it's got a fascinating history. Let's bring in the president of Karma, Marcus McCannon. Marcus, come on in, my friend. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, I think this is fascinating. So it must kind of rankle you that people think this is a Fisker Karma, but it's not. Is it? Constantly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, Fisker started a, started a car company. His company had, fell on hard times, we'll put it that way. And then we started a new car company based on some of the assets, but then redesigned the car and redesigned the entire approach to the market after, he, after his exit. Right, now originally you had a Chevy Volt engine and drivetrain, which I think rankled a lot of people because you're paying big car prices That's for right. what was essentially a lower priced car, although the Volt was not cheap, but it was, you know, it was like $35,000, $40,000, something like that. Uh, this has a BMW power plant. That's okay. right. And again, the gas engine does not drive the wheels at all. It just drives a generator, which makes electricity, which powers the two electric engines, or motors rather, at the rear of the car. And it's really quite fast. And the thing that makes it different from a lot of other cars is it's really attractive. I got so many people stopping me, go, hey, what is that? What is that thing? And they, they think it was a, uh, one of the early ones. And you go, no, it's not. It's a totally different car. But I was shocked to learn that not one of these body panels will fit on a Fisker. It's, That's right. it, 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 it's completely different. It's, so the team went through a lot of work and completely redesigned the car to try and give Karma its own identity. Right. And as we're working now, we're pushing that even further. At the end of the day, there is not an American real luxury brand here. I mean, you know, taking nothing away from Cadillac and Lincoln, but I'm really talking about the really exclusive, very premier vehicles. And we think that we have the opportunity to be that. The car has been in the market. It's been very exclusive its entire life. Right. And so we just want to carry that vision forward. Well, that's what I find fascinating. You know, back in 1915, there were 350 automobile manufacturers in America. And every year, about 2 or 3% would go out of business until right. eventually you wind up to the early 90s when you've got GM, Ford, Chrysler. Now you've got all these new, you've got Tesla, you've got McLaren, you've got Rivian, you've got... Uh, uh, Lucid, you, uh, just more and more companies coming up, and, and Karma is one of them. I find that fascinating, because I always thought it would keep getting smaller until he just had Ford and GM, and that would yeah. be it, because Chrysler yeah. was always on the ropes for a while, you know. But it's not, it's really expanded, and it's gone in totally different directions. And this is a serious hybrid, which means if you do run out of electricity, you can just pull into a gas station, put gas in it and continue on your way, which is, I really like, because yeah. I always feel secure. You know, I'm always, I never ordered the personal size pizza. Well, just give me the large one. Give me the <laughs> you know, you know, so I always order the large pizza, because I don't want to run out of pizza. You know? That's right. And the same thing, you know, so, so funny, I get in, in like my McLaren, and it says range 218 miles or something, yep. because it's a gas car, but it just has a small gas tank. But that doesn't bother me as when I get an electric car, because it's 260 miles, oh, well, what if I go? But then I realized, no, I'm really going to go a maximum of 
80 miles maybe today day, or 90 miles. Right. So it never really gets me. But that's what I like about this. You can just pull in. You can run it as a gasoline car if you choose. And if you want to plug in at night and get, like I said, I put 700 miles on it and I have not used a drop of gasoline. Yeah, I commute with it every day. Yeah. So I live down in San Diego. I drive up to my office in Irvine every day and I run electric both ways. So I come to the office, I recharge, and I go back down. And it's fantastic. You yeah. know, but when I want to take a trip, if I need to go, if I need to come up to LA or if I need to go out to Vegas, it's a piece of cake. I don't have to worry about it. And as you can see, it's, it's one of the few really good looking four doors. Not a lot of cars look good with four doors. That's why we Americans, we always like a two door coupe because it just has a sleekness to it. And I imagine you guys will probably make a two-door coupe at some point. But yeah, there might be something well, up my sleeve. Be, I always like, I always like <laughs> I'll seek it. Well, we might have something in the works. Oh, okay. But the fact that it's a four-door, a full four-seater, is this body, is it fiberglass? No, the body's all aluminum. Oh, it is aluminum. Yes. Okay. It's yeah. all so aluminum. the body and the chassis are all aluminum. Okay. So we do have um, uh, SMC on the rear deck lid and fenders, but the rest of it is aluminum. Are those 21s or 22s? 22s. 22 inch wheels. Yeah, so okay. we want to make sure that we have options for the car to, to really accentuate the style. Um, so we have 21 inch option, we have 22 inch option. It's really up to the up to the buyer. Right, right. Well, I always find with a smaller tire, you get, just get a little more cushion yes. on the road. I yeah. mean, this is sort of the GT model, and it's really quite fast. Yeah, quite. I mean, it's zero to 60 in under four seconds which is uh, pretty good. I mean, nowadays you got, you know, so many cars that are like 1.9. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But believe me, that, that's, that's really fast. What kind of, what do we have Brembo brakes in here? We have Brembo brakes yeah. in front and rear. Right. So it's got great stopping power. We try to make sure the car is always great handling. Look, we want to have a driver's car, something that you enjoy. Like you said, a lot of cars right now are saying, oh, I've got zero to 60 in one second. You can't actually use that. It's nice to say, right. but practically, I mean, you'll, the G-forces, you'll be seeing stars when you get, get done. We want you to drive, have a good time, enjoy the ride. Let's open the hood and see what we have here. The engine, I think, will surprise a lot of people. Okay, what we have here is a car designed in America, built in America, using a BMW power plant. That's right. So you get kind of the German engineering with the American sort of design and style, and and it's built here. It's 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 or assembled, whatever you want No, to call we it. design them and manufacture them right okay. here in Southern California. So right. our design facility is in Irvine, California, right, right near the coast. And then our manufacturing facility is about an hour inland in Moreno Valley. Okay. And it's a 1.5 liter, three cylinder. Now, yes. this engine, it does not drive the car. It powers the electric generator, which powers the electric motor. So that's why you have, is it 563 horsepower? Yes, 563. It's, and I'm glad you said that, because when we tell people it's, it's a 1.5 liter, or you tell us a three cylinder, everyone's like, oh, that can't be performant. No, it's just to, to drive energy into the battery so that we can drive, drive the vehicle by electric power. Right, right, and it makes quite a bit of electric power. If you were to use this as the gas electric common, say you're going on a 200 mile trip, you would run out of electricity at about 80 miles, maybe a little bit more, but you'd still average 70 miles per gallon for yes. the trip. Yeah, so we have three different drive modes. So you can actually drive it full electric, in which case you'd run through all of your electric charge before the genset turns on. Or you can run it in sustain mode, in which case the genset's always running and refilling the, the, uh, the battery pack. Or you can put it in the high performance mode, in which case, you know, everything is going to go down faster. <laughs> right, well, well, yeah, well, that's, well, thank you for being honest. <laughs> I thank you for being honest. But yeah, I found it quite, I mean, because you hear, like you say, you hear 1.5 liter. Well, what is that? You know, it's like a motorcycle. No, no, but it's not powering the car. It's That's powering right. the generator. That's right. It's making enough electricity so you can get wherever you're going. And God forbid, should you need some gasoline, you just put it just in. Just put it in. Yeah. And so you easily have 300 miles of range. And like you said, zero to 60 in four seconds. So, I mean, it's a very respectable driving experience. Yeah, like as much as I love my electrics, you know, I got a Tesla Plaid and I've got some other stuff. If I was going to Vegas, I would take something like this because I don't want to wait an hour and a half. You know, they all say, oh, it's only a half hour charging. Well, not if there are three people in front of you. Okay, now it's, it's yeah, 90 exactly. minutes to a, I mean, you're there all night, you know. So that's what makes this, I think, really, really desirable. Uh, handles well. And of course, the looks I get from people, you know, I thought, oh, it's a good looking car. But, you know, I see cars every day. So to me, I'm interested. Uh, I, I'm used to good looking cars. People would stop me at a light, hey, what is that? And ask questions and all that kind of thing. So I, I found that to be pretty, pretty fascinating. 
Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Like any modern car, you really can't can't see the power plant anymore. <laughs> but as you can see, nicely put together. That's right. And this one has got 34,000 miles on it, and boy, it's it's real tight. Well, we'll go for a ride in a minute, and you'll see. What else do we have? Let's uh, we can put this back down. Oh, like a Corvette hood. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Well, you obviously got a, a full-size trunk. You've got a, a gas port on this side. I mean, a electric port on this side, and you have a gas filler on the other side. Uh, it, it's funny, you know, the series hybrid seems to have fallen out of favor. Everybody seems to be going full electric, and I know you guys are going to have a full electric model too. Yeah, that's true. But I, I think this is, at least for the next ten years. I think this series hybrid stuff really makes a lot of sense because you're not going to get stuck. You, you have two completely different fuel sources, electricity or gasoline. And when you run out of one, you will have the other. So that makes it, I think, really desirable. Let's take a look at the trunk. Now, as you mentioned, the trunk lid is fiberglass, correct? Yes. Everything else is aluminum. And of course, you've got your charger there in case you're the gasoline runs dry. <laughs> yeah, we put a trickle charger in each okay. one of the cars, so it gives them, gives them some base. You right, can also right. put a home charger in so you can charge faster. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Want to go for a spin? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. You know, it's kind of fun looking over the haunches yeah. here. But you know, the more I drove this, the more I liked it. Because initially I was kind of like, okay, it's another, you know, electric car or so. But plenty of power, and, I, and I, the fact that, it, that I'm not going to get stuck, I have an alternative method of fueling it. Yep. I, I find that very attractive. But Sirius Hybrid seems to be dropping out of the market. I don't know why it's because it's expensive making two power plants. Well, what the reason is. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of development that goes into having the two power plants, whether it's for a gen set or if you actually want it to be a secondary mover. But I think there's a lot of momentum in the, in the industry right now right. just around BEV, whether it's political or technical. So, right. you know, so everyone's trying to figure out where can they focus, right? So they, there is a, a level of efficiency with going EV only. Right. Uh, so, you know, I think that is a reason why you, you're seeing more. I honestly think this, the pendulum is going to swing back and forth a couple times. Oh, I think it will. Because we still haven't figured out the infrastructure part. You know, in California, not so much, but other places where you have the colder climates exactly and, right. and electricity is limited, I think that's where it happens. But. Yeah, you have, we have areas in the country where people live primarily in apartments, right? right so right. having charging sitting on, on the street side right. is not really yeah. a viable option yet. And I like it how everything is political. If you like an electric car, well, you're a vegan, <laughs> you know, who wears earth shoes. And, yeah. and if, if you're a gas guy, well, you love Trump and, and yeah, guns. Yeah, and I you mean, hate the planet, it's, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's so stupid. It, 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 it's, yeah. I think at the end of the day, for me, I just want people to love cars again. Right. 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 I want to get out of a place where every car, when you go shopping, every car looks like every other car. And there's nothing that's really differentiating. You know, you don't see yourself in the car anymore. Well, every car now is black, white, or gray. When you see a car from the 50s, people go, oh, gee, I mean, it's turquoise with white, or, exactly. yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff, you know? And the, makes and, it fun. and the body shapes are different. And right. The, the, the ink occupant package is different. You know, nowadays, it's like everyone, whoever's got the one that's selling the most, everyone just copies it. And because of aerodynamics, everything almost has to look the that's same. That's right. Because aerodynamics don't change that much. That's true. And if you change your aerodynamics, now you've hurt the car, you've made it slower, you know, so. And we got the three modes, and now I'm on stealth, and I do this side. Then you're in high. You're in, in sustain. sustain. Yep. The sport. There you go. Yeah, they can see the sport. <laughs> then on this side, I got regen one, which is really kind of like light. freewheeling. Yep. Then you got regen two, which slows you down, but puts energy back. And then I prefer regen three. Me too. Because 
you can basically drive uh, without touching the brake. Yeah, and the nice thing is your brake pads last forever. Forever. I mean, you're not going to wear them out. All you need the brake pedal to do is to hold you at a stop. That's right. And that doesn't wear on them because it's not turning. So, like with this, boom. I, plus, I can watch the gauge and watch it put energy back. I enjoy the game aspect of it. You, know? <laughs> you and me both. You know, everything's a sort of game. You sort of do that, you know. I've got this thing that I do, so I commute from our, our headquarters in Irvine down to San Diego every day, and I always try and see, like, how much energy can I have left in the battery when I yeah. get to each location. And what is that, an hour and a half each way? It's about an hour. About an hour. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't do it on Friday, though. That, that's, oh, a, no, that's, that's easy two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I told the team that going forward, what we really want to do is make, make the tech as intuitive as possible. Yeah. I, for one, hate the number of screens that are coming into cars right now. Right, right. I and mean, it's like, you know, the command center thing is cool when I'm sitting at home with the kids and they're playing video games, but I don't necessarily want that in the car. I know. I, I'm, some, somebody let me buy the Nissan GTR, and I'm going through a temp, differential temperature, really? I mean, is that yeah. a problem with overheating differentials, really? Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm, there's a cool factor, right? But I think livability... The ability to enjoy the driving experience and to have tech show up when you want it. Right, right. I think that's, you know, I spent some time working for Wind River when we were owned by Intel. And, uh, and we, we went, I went all around the globe talking to companies about how to move to a software defined car. Right. But I think just because you have more software in the car doesn't mean you have to lose what it means to be a car. You know, right. Tesla allows you to keep the rear screen on all the time. Mm -hmm. This, you have it on, if you have your turn signal on, it'll tell you who's behind you or whatever, which is helpful. Why not have that on all the time? I don't understand why. Well, we actually have it as a selectable option, so you can leave it on all the time. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. Our default is that we have it come on only when you're making a maneuver. Right. Uh, you know, thinking that you want the, the central information to be there available to you most of the time. But, you know, we, we give you some option. So in sport mode, you'll have plenty of get up and go if you want it. There you go. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. What's the horsepower again? I think I got it wrong. Uh, it's 536 horsepower. 536, not 563. Yeah, That's what, yeah I'm, I'm, you can tell I'm dyslexic. Yeah, right? you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's amazing. Something like 60% of show business is dyslexic. There must be something about it. That, you know, well, they, they actually say that uh, dyslexia is actually correlated to intelligence quotient. So people who have a high IQ often have some some scale of dyslexia. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I could not agree yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Whether yeah. that's true or not, I'm going to stick with it. That's right. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> my mother was a special education teacher, so she told me that about myself. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 When we left New York, she went back to school and decided to leave her corporate job and become oh, a teacher. Okay. Yeah. Your mom's still with us? Yeah, she's oh, still good, with us. Very good. good. Well, she's got to be proud. Her son's president of a car company. It's got yeah. to be pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, you know, she's got a little bit of history in her in, yeah. in the house. So it's kind Where of does a, she live? She lives She lives with us. She's in San Diego, actually. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, it's funny. You know, it's funny when you kick it down. Kick it down. It's not shit. <laughs> but you feel like the engine is driving the wheels, but it's not. No, it's, it's driving not. the electric exactly. motor, which makes it... Yeah, I find it interesting how many different propulsion systems there are now. Yeah. For a while it was V8, transmission, rear end, you know, but yep. now you've got hybrid, you've got all kinds of... you got hybrid, you've got fuel cell, you got yeah, yeah, yeah. hydrogen ICE. <clears throat> I think everyone's trying to, we're trying to find the golden goose, right? What's the silver bullet for the next generation? I don't think there really is one. Right. Yeah, I got a kick out of driving this, especially in the fact that I wasn't using any gasoline. <laughs> It would be interesting for me to see how many looks you get being Jay Leno, right? And being like the consummate car guy. Well, I mean, people people look at the car first. They go, what's, oh, and if they recognize you, that's nice. And they, they ask you questions and try to be reasonably knowledgeable. But uh, the amount of people that find it sexy and interesting. Uh, Heinrich is an excellent designer. Yes, he know? is. I mean, trying to start your own car business, that's an impossible task. It's, it seems pretty scary, but plus he had some bad luck with and my buddy Colin Powell, he bought two of them, and he, he didn't have the best luck with it. You know? Yeah, unfortunately, there were not a lot of great experiences the first no, go around. No, no, that's that was that was it. And, and Colin's a real car guy. You know, he would he would rebuild Volvos. That was his really. Thing. That's what he loved to do. He loved to build Volvos. Now I read a couple of views where people didn't like the sound of the three cylinder. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't bother me. It sounds okay. It's, it's fine. Just kind of, when it kicks in, 
it kicks in with 536 horsepower. Yes, it does. It's just so funny that it's not making horsepower, it's making electricity. Making electricity, yeah. Which makes torque. Yeah, people, the thing people generally don't like is the idle sound. So yeah. the idle quality, I think we have some, some work we could do with tuning, right. but when, it, when you're in wide open throttle, I think it's fine. So these are all sort of custom built. People come in, what color do you want? What upholstery you like? You can pretty much do anything you want. That's the way we want it. So yeah. we want the experience to be unique to the individual. Right. Because at the end of the day, the cars are rare and we want them to basically be like collector's items, something that they're proud of. It reflects yeah. them. And that's one thing a small company can do that a big company can't. You can pivot quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I have to admit, the more I drove it, the more I liked it. I liked the handling. I got really used to it. I like sitting low. I like looking over the two humps and the fenders. Mm -hmm. And then the front end dives down right in front of you. So. Well, I was really pleased to get your feedback, honestly. I mean, if I was buying the luxury model, I'd probably want a smaller wheel with more tire. Yeah, yeah, a little I mean, softer it, ride. It, it, I, I like a firm, compliant ride. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people like really soft and, you know, that spongibility thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like something that handles. Like, we'll take this turn right here. I mean, it's got, it's got plenty of pickup, plenty yeah, to go. Good. And the fact that when I get on it, I'm not wasting gasoline, I'm wasting electricity. That's exactly which right. Which is sustainable, you know. Are there faster EVs? Yeah, I think a Ludacris is faster. Yeah. But it's only faster if you're racing. That's right. It's not that much faster if you're on the road. I just find it fascinating. You have a gas motor that converts to electricity, or yeah. the energy is converted yeah, to electricity. electricity. Yeah, 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 it's, it's interesting. And like I say, if you drove this just as a car without being an electric all the time, you would average 70 miles per gallon. That's right. Which is pretty amazing. That's pretty good. We wound up talking about a lot of things besides cars because it's it pretty much, it's not a lot of explanation. It works fine. It operates perfectly. Yep. This one's got 33,000 miles on it. still very tight. It's still basically a brand new car. And I guess anybody that's interested in having a hand-built car built in the United States, right up the street in California, that's right. They can come in. They can pick their colors and pick their upholstery, and it's like one of those price on request kind of things. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, so. something like that. Yeah. No, I mean they do a real good job. You've got. Well, thank you. Well, more than adequate horsepower. I mean, it's. Well, here, yeah, look. There's a camera right there. Let me just point my foot in. Boom, and you fly by. Is there stuff faster? Yeah, but not many. That's right. Maybe the Lucid, maybe the Tesla Plaid, but that's about it. And it's one of the only series hybrids left. As I said, that's because you have gas in cases of emergency. You know, if you have another family member and they're driving this and, oh, daddy, it's out of electricity. Well, you can pull into a gas station, put gas in it. And just keep you moving. You know, you're not stuck at some creepy charging station in the middle of the night, you know. So I, I really like that aspect of it. I think one day, someday in the future, that'll be passe because all cars will be electric, they'll be charging everywhere, or they'll have thousand mile range battery, there'll be something. But until that time comes, I, I think it makes the most sense. I loved my Chevy Volt when I had that. Yeah. I had that for nine years. I put, uh, we put something like 93,000 miles on it, only 3,800 of them were uh, gas because even though we only got 40 miles, we just use it to run errands all day with the shop. And every time we came back, we plug it plug in for it 15 in. minutes, 10 minutes. You pick up six miles, oh, okay, run another errand, plug it back in again, you know? That's so it. it worked out great, so. Marcus, thank you very much, my Thanks, friend. Jay. I appreciate you, man, Yeah, Always. yeah, really great, really great. I, I, I think you'll do great things with this company. Thank you. And uh, I'm anxious to hear, he's, he, he's hiding what he's got coming <laughs> in the future. But, I'll tell you, very soon, we're gonna be introducing what we expect the next three years of Karma to look like. Okay. And I want you to see it. I, I, I'll, be, I'll be there. I hope you enjoyed this look at uh, an interesting new American car being built in America. So uh, check it out. See you guys next week.